Hello, it's Jim Brown here, rockin' and rollin', wing and wing downwind, with the illustrations from my book, Among the Multi-Hulls. Ten minutes. Sailing doesn't get any better than running in fair winds. Chapter one is entitled, To Build a Baby. It's the story of the creation of this old boat scrimshaw, and after f almost 40 years, she's still my baby. The text for this story is on our website, www.outrig.org. So let's go back now and have a look at the setting where she was built. Our home in the late 1960s was in these two little houses down in the bottom of a box canyon on the central California coast. And that towering tree is actually two giant redwoods close together so close together that you could stand between them and look up 200 feet like staring up from the bottom of a 200 foot well. Joanna and I and our two boys, that's Stephen on the left there and Russell in front, we really loved living in this place. But we had the idea to go for a big deal family adventure, so we started building a boat. A seafaring boat, of all things. I was supposed to be a boat designer, and I knew just enough about building my designs to realize that it was a tremendous lot of work. So here I am dry fitting the plywood panel planking for this main hull of my trimaran. And I decided that in order to really apply the planks properly, I needed some help. Several of our friends in the area were also building boats of my design, and so we decided to start a series of planking parties, like the old barn raisings, where we would all get together and help each other out. Yeah, that's my son Stephen there, hamming it up for the camera. That guy on the right is trying to make out with the ladies who are inside the boat wiping up glue. There's our planking crew as seen from between the great trees. We've got the job done after a hard day, but we're getting ready for a hard day's night. First, we must have a great feed, usually a prodigious potluck affair over by the creekside. And then a real campfire with lots of homemade music and boat blab way into the night. Then, after months of lonely part-time work, I had the three hulls, fiberglassed and sanded, ready to turn right set up for their decks and cabins. But while the boat was under construction, our kids were using it as a giant playhouse, sometimes camping in it overnight. They definitely grew up around the boating idea, and we often had chances to sail with friends in other boats. They definitely knew what it was all about. We were all getting ready for a big deal boat ride. So in 1971, we were forced to leave our beloved canyon home. There was no way for us to get a completed trimaran out of there. We moved the three hulls separately over this logging road, which was the only access to our place, into Santa Cruz. I had borrowed an old truck and trailer for the move, but Stephen and I, on the way to town, we had a breakdown on a nasty curve of the coast highway. We were in trouble. But a friend came along in a school bus and towed us, the truck, and the boat out of trouble. Now that year, 1971 and 2, before the launching of Scrimshaw, was a truly frantic one for us. There were other planking parties going on, especially ones like this, where the downbeat of the builder's hammer on the hull was kept in time with something on the guitar like, uh, We all live in a yellow submarine, a yellow submarine, yes, a yellow submarine. By 1970, there were a lot of sea runners under construction, especially in California. And most of them were built by workaday landlubbers who were anxious to escape the craziness of the times and seek adventure. But the multi-hull phenomenon was happening all over the world. 
This one was built in Norway by the guy with the megaphone directing his friends to haul it through the snow for the launching. Part of the trip took them down a mountainside and through the outrun of a ski jump. And then his friends hauled it through the snow to the harbor. The boat was launched at Oslo Fjord in a fantastic rocky harbor called Jenner. By 1970, there were trimorans coming out over the treetops from backyards, and Joanna and I realized that we were obliged for consultation to literally hundreds of sea runner builders, and there was no way that we were going to be able to extricate ourselves from this responsibility without creating a truly definitive construction manual. So in this book, we put the answers to all of the questions that we've been asked in 10 years of boat design. And we also put Joe Hudson's wonderful cartoons. Because most of our clients had never built much more than a birdhouse, we had to include lots of photographs and drawings and how-to explanations. We wanted to sail away without having to come back. But now, 40 years later, Amateur boat building has come back. And because this book was widely used for building many boats other than sea runners, the Outrig project is now republishing an updated version of the Sea Runner Construction Manual. And what's more, the project is also republishing the Case for the Cruising Trimaran from 1980. This one is about how to use a multi hull. It contains photographs of interiors, discusses provisioning, safety, and seamanship in multi-hulls. For example, it has details of our tired drogue used for riding out great storms, sometimes called despair tire. Both of these books are long out of print, but they're highly valued in some quarters. For instance, they've been stolen from all the libraries. I think in large part because of Joe Hudson's great cartoons. And they're just the first of a selection of classic multi-hull literature to be offered by the Outrig Project. In case it's hard to see, there's a little trimaran anchored in the distance, and this dude has come ashore with his twisted mast to approach the local savages with the caption, Hi there, you weld em aluminum? <laughs> Well, let's get back to the new book now. I finally got the boat in the water in June 1972, and we were desperate to take off. We all wanted this. Joanna was right behind the project all the way. Of course, the kids were ready to go, and so was I, ready to go crazy. My friends blasted up these posters of me because the stress of finishing the boat arranging our affairs, and most of all, abandoning my dogs and my design career had really taken its toll. I have always found that the hardest part of voyaging is getting the hell out of the harbor. But we did it. We sailed away from California and never came back to live there again. We spent the next three years traveling, living in and from the boat and it was certainly the zenith experience of our family lives. Stephen is on the right, me in the hat, Russell and Joanna. And when we get together today in 2010, we still sometimes talk of that experience. And if you would like to read about it, the first three chapters of Among the Multihulls are to be serialized on our website. It's all free at outrig.org. This is Jim Brown wishing you and the Outrig Project fair winds.